Welcome to a special Sports Jam for the week of December 2nd. I'm John Jacobson. And I'm Jay Wilcox. This week as we transition from fall to winter sports, a look back at some of our favorite Sports Jam spotlight stories from the fall season. We get a chance to meet a lot of great athletes and people, and we're happy to bring you their stories. And we'll get started with a football player from Osseo who helped lead his team into the state playoffs for the first time in 20 years. Here's our Sports Jam Spotlight story from October on the Orioles' Denny Findlay. At 5'9", 158 pounds, Denny Findlay would be undersized as a high school running back. Problem is, he's a defensive end. Actually, the problem is getting number 47 blocked. The senior is one of the most disruptive linemen in the Northwest Suburban Conference. Denny leads the Orioles in sacks, tackles for loss, and forced fumbles. I just try to do the best I can. I either try to beat him with speed or beat him with the strength that I have and do what I have to do. You question how he got in there so fast most of the time. It's like the quarterback will be handing the ball off and he's almost there to take it from the quarterback. It's just like all of his hustle is really paying off and it's fun to see it. Danny didn't play a lot of varsity ball as a junior, but he worked hard to improve and become a disruptive force for a solid Osseo defense. I feel like I'm going twice as fast as I used to. I feel like I'm working the edge as I, as I need to to help out the team. And if I feel like um, if I feel like I'm not doing that good in like a certain part, I feel like the team wants to still be there to back me up and do their best. For me. He's our bullet on uh, kickoff, so it tells you the type of speed he has. I'd put him up against some of my tailbacks in a race a few times. You know, he's only played football a few years, and he's just a fun-loving, great kid. You know, he smiles all the time, excited to be out here. One of the hardest-working kids around, and you tell him to do it, and he'll do it. He's come a long way, considering he didn't play organized football at all until eighth grade. Then he was born in Liberia, came to the United States at age three. He soon gravitated to the sport, though, and growing up in Brooklyn Park, he played a lot of what might have been called sandlot football back in the day. Every weekend, we come outside, we play in the backyard, or we go somewhere to play football and just have fun and just lay back and do what we have to do. But it'd be like, from right there, that's what we end up learning. That's when we, we end up starting right there. That moment of when we start playing football in the backyard and doing all that, we decided, yeah, this is what we needed to do. Danny is an enthusiastic leader on the field, and he lets his teammates know when they may be losing a little bit of their edge. Mostly for me, I start slapping home and say, come on, boy, we got this. No matter what, do not think we're going to lose. I believe we're going to win. And winning is in our motion. I believe that we will win. That was like the motto that, that's kept on going on and on and on. Osseo's football season continues Friday night as Denny and his teammates play on into November. He'd like to see his football career continue beyond wearing the orange and black. He's probably too small to play big-time college football, but I'll tell you what, if I was a Division III school, I'd be coming to grab him because he would be awesome on special teams. You could put him in on passing downs, and he's not going to hurt you. So I'd look to him to go some Division III school and you know carry on his academics because he's really strong academically also. For me, I started working out since I was little, and all the way here, since eighth grade, I was working out 24-7, so it's like football is like everything to me. Osseo lost to Totino Grace in the state 6A quarterfinals. Denny told us he wasn't certain what he'll study in college, although he has interests in both engineering and medicine. It was a great year for the Breck girls tennis program. As the regular season ended and the playoffs were getting started, we featured two Mustang seniors who have been program mainstays. They're basically co-number one singles players for the powerful Breck girls tennis team. Seniors Patty Zhao and Sonny Tang have been alternating playing number one and number two singles, and they're okay with that. When you're at position one, it could get like really pressuring, so I feel like it's nice to have like a switch up and be second sometimes. Lots of times when we play the same teams every year, we actually play a lot of the same girls from each team, so it's really been fun to switch it up this year and get to play different opponents and have different styles to play against. Oh, it's just been great without Patty and Sunny. You know, I feel like I wouldn't have the depth that I have because of them being at one and two and switching off between those two spots. It makes my team just all the stronger. Zhao is rated number two and Tang number three in the state class A singles rankings, and they carried identical eight and three records through the first 11 matches. Zhao was state runner-up in singles last fall and fourth as an eighth grader in class AA while playing for Maple Grove. Tang was state runner-up with partner Emily Alper in doubles in eighth and ninth grades. Two very strong players with games that are a little different. 
My strength would be just being able, being versatile and being able to switch up my game plan if something isn't working or like trying to figure out what's the best strategy for me depending on what their game is like. Um, my biggest weakness, I mean, this season I think I could have been a little bit more consistent in my play. Surprisingly this year my serve has been pretty on point, I would say. Um, definitely trying to take it, the ball a little more early. And I would say my weakest um, area is my net game. I could work on my volleys a lot more. I think the strongest part about her game is her ground strokes. A lot of tops spin really deep and those are the toughest balls to get back. Um, she's really consistent at the baseline as well. I think she's really good at serving and coming in the net. Um, she's able to like set the point up and know which balls like to come in on, which is what I really need to work on. I don't really know what she needs to work on. Maybe being a little more aggressive from the baseline, I guess, is the only thing I can think of. They still faced arch rival Blake in the regular season, but it's a big change at playoff time. Breck won't have to go through defending State A champ Blake to reach the state tournament, with Blake now in Class AA. They're always a reason that we aren't able to make it to state, so it's nice to actually have an opportunity to make it. We actually just beat them a couple weeks ago, 4-3, which was an awesome win, but um, I think it'll make it a little bit easier, less pressure when it comes section time because they're always a really hard team to beat. Um, I think we're really excited and hope to make it to the state tournament this year as a team. And speaking of the postseason, singles Dynamos Tang and Zhao intend to team up to form what should be a formidable doubles team. Me and Sunny are thinking about playing doubles together. We both, I'm um, during this, we've actually played doubles in some um, outside of school um, tournaments and stuff, but during the season we mostly just play singles and so it'll be fun to get a chance to play doubles. I think it's a great combination. I think they've got good, they both have both strong serves, they've volleyed, they like to come to the net, they like to hit, they like to play doubles, they seem to think doubles is more fun. They're making sure to enjoy their senior seasons in high school. Tang and Zhao are thinking academics first when it comes to choosing a college, and neither is sure that they'll play collegiate tennis. This much is sure. They've left quite a legacy at BRAC. Tang and Zhao did go on to team up to win the state Class A doubles title in a unique way, beating their teammates Grace Zumwinkle and Kendall Kozakowski in the finals. BRAC also captured the Class A team title, beating Rochester Lord 6-1 in the championship and John some great careers for both of those young ladies. And a terrific way to close out their senior seasons as well. There's plenty more to come on Sports Jam. Next up, hear from a Maple Grove defense and gave opponents fits on the football field this fall. It was a great season for the Maple Grove football team. They went undefeated during the regular season and won the Northwest Suburban Conference's North Division title. A big reason for the Crimson's success this season was its defense. Jason Malala looked at the Crimson D at the start of the state playoffs. Players on the Maple Grove defense call themselves the dark side. Outside linebacker Zach Corbin came over from the offense and then we said he came to the dark side. And that's where it all started. They got dark side skittles, and they they have they have boxes of dark side skittles all over and stuff like that. But I, but hey, you got to have some swagger on that side of the ball, and it's been fun watching them, and they've they've made a huge difference for us this year. It's a very fitting nickname because the Crimson D has met lights out for opposing offenses this season. It comes from the intensity we play at every practice. We go harder, so we go harder practice, and then we bring it a whole new level during the game. Just fly around and make plays. Just wear down another team. They'll try to get a little sloppy and we'll take advantage of it. The strength of Maple Grove's defense might be the culmination of a system put in place three years ago when Matt Lombardi became the head coach. Yeah, I think we're starting to really get comfortable with what he's installed and we're starting to finally get it. So now we're playing fast and playing hard and not really thinking about what we're supposed to do. Lombardi was the defensive coordinator at YZ when the Trojans won state titles in 2005, 2008, and 2010, and his defenses were known for being relentless, fast, and smart. Some of the same qualities Maple Grove has displayed this season. They're playing fast. I think that's the part. Um, we were getting there, but now we're starting to play and create a lot of havoc and cause turnovers, and we're starting to believe we can score on D, and I think um, we're just creating an attitude that I still, it's, it's my passion of football, and you see those kids over there playing hard, and I just think it's, 
if you're going to make it to the big time, you got to have a great defense. I mean, that's what Eden Prairie has proved year in and year out, and Wyzetta's and, and Minnetonka's and those schools. That all the great, great teams have great defenses, so we're hoping we can become that. We don't have that 6'4", 250-pound guy, so we just, we are, what we have over other teams is our speed on defense, you know. We just, we work on that during the offseason and stuff, explosiveness and speed and everything, and uh, I think our defense is pretty fast, so we like to use that as, uh, to our advantage and everything, so we just fly around there and make plays. MG's defense also has a nose for the football. The Crimson has forced a total of 35 turnovers and scored six touchdowns. Yeah, we create a lot of uh, pressure in the backfield, it kind of rushes the quarterback, so that causes some bad throws by the QBs. And then we just make havoc in the backfield for the running backs that know where to go, and then we just strip the ball out. No team makes it to the state tournament without solid play on both sides of the ball, and the Maple Grove defense perfectly complements the offense. Consistently getting stops and forcing turnovers allows the Crimson offense to get on the field and do their thing. Maple Grove is now 10-0 and gearing up for a state title run. The dark side will no doubt be ready for the bright lights of the state tournament. Jason Melillo, 12 Sports. In six of Maple Grove's ten victories this season, the defense gave up seven points or less. They were eliminated by Roseville 24-21 in a thriller in the Class 6A quarterfinal. What a terrific game that was, Jay, at uh, TCF Bank Stadium. Tough loss for Maple Grove, but a, a great high school game. Yeah, and a great season for Maple Grove. And you, you have the feeling that this might be something for the long haul, mm -hmm. that this isn't a one- or two-year thing. That program is definitely in a spot now where I think they'll be contending year in and year out. Uh, we're back in a moment. We'll go back in time to feature a great Robbinsdale High School athlete from the past who entered a new Hall of Fame this fall. Welcome back to Sports Jam. This fall, athletes and coaches from a high school that closed nearly 32 years ago were honored. Members of the charter class of the Robbinsdale High School Athletic Hall of Fame. We caught up with a man who showed us why his class voted him most athletic. Go! Len Lillyholm still gets around pretty well. Take a right! Especially on skates. The 72-year-old plays hockey two to three times a week still showing a flash of the speed and skills that shaped a remarkable career. It's probably the only sport where guys can play to be my age uh, competitively. It's uh, everything else you kind of, you know, baseball, softball, you kind of end in your 40 or 50 and you quit. But, uh, you know, the, the hockey continues and it's, it's growing at my age. We've got tournaments now around the country, 65 and older, 70 and over. Len's hockey life spans some 60 years now from growing up near Twin Lake and Crystal, and then in the late 1950s playing three years at Robbinsdale High School. He was the only All-State player in the school's history. Well, I was uh, obviously not the biggest guy on the team, uh, but I was, I was probably the fastest one. And so I was very quick, and uh, I could pretty good stick handler and stuff, so I was able to uh, control the play and so things like that as time went on, and, and I was always more of an assist player than a goal scorer. In February of 1959, Robbinsdale won their section and qualified for the school's lone state tournament appearance in hockey. Len Lillyholm was the team's leading scorer. And even back then, the state hockey tournament in Minnesota was a big deal. I remember I was at the state tournament my junior year watching it, and I mean, I was in awe. And uh, to get there the next year was, you know, quite a treat. And uh, we weren't, I'll tell you what, the, our team, skill-wise, we weren't the most skilled team in the world, but the effort, I think, uh, got us there. Though hockey was his best sport, Len was, like most of his teammates, a three-sport athlete. In track and field, he held the school record in the pole vault and was an all-conference halfback and linebacker for the Robins' 1958 state championship football team. He teamed with standouts like future Gophers defensive tackle and linebacker Julian Hook and Denny Claridge, who later quarterbacked the Nebraska Cornhuskers. You know, Claridge was an uh, outstanding quarterback. I mean, if he wanted to run, he'd always run for 10 yards. And, and uh, we had, we didn't have the biggest linemen, but they were quick and strong. And we dominated. I don't think anybody scored more than six points on us all year. It was, a, you know, just one of those years. From Robbinsdale, Len went to the University of Minnesota to play hockey and was part of the buzzsaw line with Gary Schmaltzbauer and Dave Brooks, the younger brother of Herb Brooks. 
Lynn graduated from the U, but his hockey career never slowed. I was the last guy cut in the 64 team. It's kind of like Herbie Brooks was cut in the 60. And so that really, uh, uh, I just realized that I had to be on the Olympic team, so it kept me going. So then I played in the 66 and 67 national teams, and then the 68. And Len still has the 68 Olympic jersey to prove it. Might even had a little blood on it at one time. After four years as a player coach professional in Austria, Len and his wife Carol and family returned home to Minnesota, where he played one season in the old World Hockey Association for the Minnesota Fighting Saints. Glenn Sonmore was the coach, and I was, uh, we had a summer Olympic Development League in Edina Braemar, and uh, I was coaching one of the teams, and he came out and scouted a few of the guys, and, and gave me a phone call and said, he says, I'm uh, going to be coach at the, uh, with the Fighting Saints. Would you be interested in playing? And I said, sure. <laughs> so I was a 31-year-old rookie with the Fighting Saints. In a little more than a week, Len will be back at his old high school to be part of a special night honoring a dozen of the finest coaches and athletes to wear the blue and gold of Robbinsdale. I'm incredibly honored for, you know, being in this first group because uh, there's been tons of good athletes there. And then to have uh, two, uh, two other, you know, Julian Hook and Dennis Claridge and, you know, same year classmates is, you know, it's phenomenal. That Hall of Fame ceremony was in October. Len is now on his way south for the winter. He and his wife are visiting family in New Jersey before taking up residence in West Palm Beach, Florida until next spring. Sports Jam returns in a moment. The Prairie Seeds boys soccer team moved up to Class AA this season and reached the state tournament. Twin brothers from Plymouth played a big role in getting the Lycans to state. He's going to look for a shot. He fires. Nelson to save. Rebounds loose and a goal. Prairie Seeds makes it 2 to nothing. It's a thrill to be in the state tournament, and this time in Class AA for Prairie Seed seniors and twin brothers Munir and Hafid Peterson Darbaki. We were really determined, especially before the final. You know, we were really focused because especially what, what happened after, you know, what happened last year it really disappointed us because we had a lot of seniors that were, were really excited to win state last year, but, you know, it didn't work out. But this year we got a good team. We have, you know, our coaches doing, doing the right things for us. And as, if we keep listening to him, we'll be able to pull out every result and we can, hopefully we can win state this year. It's really exciting because for me, I've been going to the state tournament for the past four years now. Uh, at least, you know, last year we were going to, but then so with the situation that occurred, we weren't able to. But yeah, it feels good because four years in a row being section champions is really difficult to do, but we pulled it off and it's, it's, it's an exciting prospect. They've played together all the way up. Munir, who is 12 minutes older, is a high-scoring forward. Hafid, who is hoping a knee injury he aggravated in the section final won't keep him out of the state tournament, leads as a defender for the Lycans. Sharing the experience with a twin has been great. It's really, really good because um, we've been playing together on the same club, of course, since we were like 10 years old, as when we first started playing soccer. And um, To play on the same team as him and to watch him score all those goals for the past few years, it's, it's, it's fun to see. I'm always in the back, so I'm just basically watching and enjoying him play. We've been playing together since we were little. I mean, like, if, if it weren't for each other, like, we're the reason that we were able to grow so much. I mean, he's a defender, I'm a forward, and we, we used to play all the time against each other when we were little, and that's how it helped us develop our skills. So, I mean, it's, I, I'm proud to see him play. He's proud to see me play. It's just, it's a good thing, because we've been together for so long. I mean, we understand the way each other we play. So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's a good feeling. They're completely two different players. Uh, Hafid is, is a defender. Uh, he plays uh, center back or outside back. Uh, Monier is more of a creative player. Um, he's a forward slash attacking midfielder. So they're different. Uh, Javier is more of a, a little bit subtle, more of a calm, uh, more of a leader uh, for the team. Monier is more of a little bit of, uh, if you call it, energy and a little bit feistier. Prairie Seed soccer has seen a lot of controversy, including the brawl with Tatino Grace at the end of last season's section final. The Darbakis are able to look at the whole situation as a learning experience. We're just focused on playing. We don't really care about what anyone, anyone else says. And we learned a lot from the experience last year. We know, not, we know what we're supposed to do, what we're not supposed to do, and we're, we're following that. So that's all that matters. This year, we are setting a much more positive standard. You know, we're, we're, we're a lot more calm than compared to last year. So yeah, I mean, yeah, overall, it's, it's really good. I feel like we're, we're not necessarily cleaning things up, but just cleaning up our image. 
These guys excel in the classroom too as A students and have enjoyed the small school atmosphere at Prairie Seeds. Originally I was supposed to go to Cooper or Armstrong, but then in eighth grade I transferred from, I used to go to Sandberg, they're closed now, but yeah, I transferred from Sandberg to Prairie Seeds, so I've been going here since middle school. And the environment here is a lot different than I expected. I always thought a, a, a small school wouldn't be very exciting, you know, it'd be pretty boring, but no, actually, um, Academic wise, it helps you a lot because you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with the teacher and just you get to know everyone, you know, it's not like there's people that you don't know. You get to know everyone and everyone gets to know you, so it's hard not to make friends. Hafid and Munir are taking classes at North Hennepin Community College as part of the post-secondary enrollment options program. I signed up for some classes and the first semester I was there I took four classes and I figured out about this uh, two-year program that they had. So you can get your, your associate's degree, it's not really anything special, but I mean, you can get two years out of the way and then you can transfer out, so that's what I'm hoping to do. I'm, I'm already set on my way to get my two-year degree when I graduate this year from high school. Munir and Hafid plan to play college soccer and have discussed at length majors and career choices that might include business or something in the medical field. And it's pretty likely they'll head to school together. It's always been the plan for us ever since the start. Yeah, our, our dad has always told us that that would be the best thing for us and we always know that if we're not around each other, it's been boring. So yeah, we, we definitely want to go to school together. Hafid did not end up playing because of injury while Manuir scored a goal as Prairie Seeds was eliminated by eventual champion North St. Paul in the state class AA quarterfinals. We'll be back to wrap up Sports Jam in just a moment. Holiday fun is in store for you at the Crystal Winterfest on Saturday, December 7th from 10 a.m. to noon at the Crystal Community Center. Find out more at 12.tv. You work hard for your money. 12 News helps you spend it wisely. Money Savers shares advice to make you a better consumer. Watch Money Savers on your local source, 12 News. Get into the holiday spirit at the Holly Sunday Celebration on Sunday, December 8th from 2 to 5 at the Brooklyn Center Community Center. Get more details at 12.tv. Our game of the week is an early season battle in Northwest Suburban Conference boys basketball as defending league champ Park Center visits Armstrong Tuesday night. Watch it live on our website at 12.tv or catch the replays on Channel 12 Wednesday at 7 and 10 p.m. And that will do it for this week's show. Thanks so much for watching. Next week we'll have our first full winter sports show. See you next time on Sports Jam. From Main Street to Wall Street, what happens in the business world affects you. Watch 12 News for Business Matters, an inside look at local business. It's only on Channel 12, your local source. Channel 12 encourages you to support an area food shelf with donations during this holiday season. Go to 12.tv to see a list of food shelves in the northwest suburbs. Staying healthy can be difficult, but 12 News wants to get you on the right track. Health Check seeks expert advice on how to stay healthy. Tune into Channel 12, your local source.